Hi, this is John from John's Workshop, and today's project is changing the automatic transmission fluid in this 2011 W164 ML350 with the Formatic. All right, before you get started, you want to just make sure you have everything you're going to need for this. And uh, so I've got plenty of fluid here. I had some left from a previous change back at a, a 65,000 miles. Now we're at 130,000 miles. So I'm going to reuse some of the stuff I had before, and then I ordered some more. You want to have about 11 or 12 liters total uh, because you're also probably going to do the uh, transfer case with this same fluid, although we're not going to do that in this particular video. Um, so you want to make sure you've got plenty of fluid. Um, this is one of the choices you have. Um, I kind of like this because I had it before and I just ordered the same thing again. Uh, you want to have a pump that can pump that fluid and so this was the pump that I had ordered before. Basically goes in here and you can pump through this hose into this tool right here. You're going to need this. It's a, an adapter that it's a filler adapter that goes into the uh, pan of the transmission to fill and we'll show you how that works later. Uh, you want to make sure you've got the filter itself and new stand pipe as well as the uh, new bolts. These are one-time use bolts and of course the seal for the transmission pan. Um, also I've printed out just kind of helpful the uh, work instructions for the actual job just in case you're wondering what the torque is or if there's a question while you're doing the job so I like to have all that stuff ready before we get started so the first step is to uh, warm up the car I like to drain it when it's warm so we've warmed up the car and there's a 13 millimeter drain plug right here uh, so first step is to pull that drain plug out and have a nice big pan there you can see the fluid coming out. This is supposed to be blue fluid and uh, it looks pretty black coming out right now. So this is another 65,000 miles on the transmission oil. So step one is pop the plug. Oh, you can kind of see it's a little bit blue there. Um, and drain the, as much fluid as you can get out. And then the next step is we're going to pull, um, we're going to tip that, that uh, stand tube over. So the stand tube is uh, keeping the rest of this fluid from draining. So if you put a small screwdriver in there and you pop that open, you can see you just, all we did was tilt that uh, stand tube a little bit and then you can get the remaining uh, fluid out of the pan so you don't have to uh, have all that stuff in there while you're removing the pan. On the front end of the transmission pan here, there's a bunch of connectors and some wires. So we need to take that off and you can see there's a, a bolt here. So we're going to remove that and then pull this uh, out of the way. To get that bracket out, uh, there's a bolt on the driver's side right here that holds that. And uh, then there's the other one that we just looked at. We've got to get both of those out. So with both of those bolts removed from that bracket, you see you can now push this to the side and get to that uh, last pan bolt right there that's kind of obscured by this um, this bracket here. So that's how you get to that one and then you just kind of work around this as you're pulling the pan out. But with that loose you can kind of move this out of the way. One of the things I like to do is is clean some of this dirt off with a toothbrush before you take the pan out uh, just to help keep from getting dirt anywhere. We're, we're definitely going to be cleaning the pan, but just want to make sure there's no contamination that's going to get back somehow onto the uh, transmission. I've got the middle bolts out and the front two bolts are loose. And so what we want to do is take the back of the pan down first because there's still fluid left and it'd just be a little easier to have that, uh, the fluid come into the drain pan in a known way rather than kind of sloshing all over the place. So I'm just taking these last two on the back side out. I'm just taking this last bolt out on this side, on the back. And there's a bunch of fluid that's still in here. And you can see, there it goes. So you wanna do that and then drain the rest of that. Um, in a controlled way so it doesn't just come flying out. We get the front bolts out 
now all the bolts are out. So we should be able to pull this down. These little blocks kind of get stuck up in the in that bracket that we loosened. There goes that one. And then we can carefully get this down. There we go. And the pan is out and the seal as well. Okay, so now that the pan has been removed, we're going to get this filter out of here. And this, if you just pull and kind of line up the hole, there you go. Watch out. There's a little bit that squirts out. <laughs> this is what the pan looks like uh, now that it's out. And uh, see, it's it's not too bad. There doesn't seem to be a lot in here. Um, the magnets, of course, they always you know capture iron uh, filings uh, from the from the bearings. But uh, overall, this looks uh, this looks pretty good in here. So we want to drain the torque converter too, and so. Uh, you just pull this rubber plug uh, out here and that allows you to see up to the torque converter and what you end up doing is rotating the crankshaft pulley which is here so you got to drop the little plastic pan here I didn't show that step but so you want to only turn it uh, clockwise because that's the engine rotation direction with one hand you can turn the the crankshaft and then with the you can kind of Put your head up here and look to see when the drain plug comes around and there you can see it in there and so i'm going to pull that off and drain the torque converter i had some troubles with the torque converter plug here uh, it's a four millimeter allen but i found that it was a little bit loose the four millimeter in there so i actually went to a 530 seconds allen so english and then i ended up putting a wrench on this uh, kind of like this to get the leverage that I needed to break this thing free uh, So that's how I was able to get out of there and uh, you may have the same trouble uh, it Hasn't been off for a while and Then once you get that uh, drain plug out see it just drains and uh, just make sure you get your drip pan ready It kind of squirts out towards the front of the car So just uh, be ready when it comes out, but uh, it takes a little while for this all to drain So to get the drain plug torqued to the right torque. This one's an eight millimeter thread or eight millimeter size plug. And so it says 10 Newton meters is the tightening torque. So in order to get the torque wrench on there, I had to kind of craft this up. So I took that 530 seconds uh, Allen that I used to take the torque plug out with and uh, I cut it off and put it into a four millimeter socket. It just barely fits in there, just a little tiny tap. And that is how we're gonna torque up the uh, drain plug. So 88 new, uh, inch pounds is the same as 10 Newton meters. So that's what we're going to use here. Okay. And there is about 88 foot pounds. I'm sorry, inch pounds. Next, you want to make sure that where the pan gasket is going to contact the bottom of the transmission case, that that's all clean. So you want to wipe that off carefully and make sure there's no dirt left all the way around. Okay, so I've got the new filter. It's, um, it's a Mercedes part. PA66 is the filter here. Uh, exactly the same as the one that I pulled out. And when you go to put the new one in, you want to get uh, some, you can just use some of this used transmission fluid. Make sure that the O-ring is lubricated here and it just pushes right back up into the hole up here like that. And then you're ready to put the pan in. Okay, so for replacement of the standpipe here, when we're looking at the uh, work instructions, there's an old pan design which is down here and a new pan design which is here and they look a little similar. Um, and so the key is supposedly these are oval shaped here. So if we look here, these look oval shaped. Um, the other thing too is that um, you can see the date here as of 21.6.10. So that would be, um, 21st of June of 2010, um, but on my transmission pan, the date on here, 
I believe, which would be 021011, which would be uh, the 2nd of October of 2011. So those two things together are telling me that this is the newer pan design, even though it's got this chamfered part right here, which they talk about in the older pan design. But I think because of those oval shaped uh, holes here, uh, oops, right here, um, I think this is the one that uses the green overflow pipe. So that's what was in there before and that's what I'm going to put in again this time. So I ran into an issue here, so I didn't notice, but these are my original pan bolts, the six of them, uh, and it's a one-time use bolt. You tighten it up to a specified torque and then you tighten it another 180 degrees. And uh, when I ordered from FCP Euro, they sent me these, which are clearly not the right one. So I'm kind of stuck. I'm going to have to reuse these uh, and I'm going to just have to set them to a particular torque. The pan all ready to go back in. It's been cleaned up. The magnets are uh, all clean and back in place. And we've got the green stand tube here. We've got the new uh, gasket. I'm going to put a little bit of transmission fluid on this surface here uh, right before putting it on. When torquing down the bolts, I like to go around several times, don't do it all at one time, but you want to do start here in the middle, go to the other side, you know, up front, back here, and then come all the way to the back bolt, and then the other one, and then just kind of keep working through that pattern uh, as you go through and tighten them. As I mentioned before, I am reusing my uh, transmission pan bolts, unfortunately. Um, and so there was actually a good video online that showed a fellow who was tightening to the proper torque and then he did the 180 and he was measuring the torque in the tightening while he was doing the 180 and he was getting uh, essentially eight newton meters. So I converted that to uh, inch pounds, which is what my torque wrench has. So I'm at about 70 inch pounds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and torque my bolts. Hopefully they won't break uh, and they'll stay on there uh, for, uh, for each one of these to 70 inch pounds. This is the tool for filling, and it really just goes in the drain plug and provides a way to hook the hose to uh, pump fluid into the transmission. So you can see it's really just, just put it finger tight there, and then we're gonna hook our pump hose onto here. So I'm pumping fluid in here. I've got the hose hooked here, and here you can see my setup for pumping. Uh, I've got the pump inside the uh, fluid and it's on my advanced pumping stand here you can see which uh, some of you might recognize as an old old TV stand um, but essentially I'm just pumping uh, six liters into the transmission pan here at this point and that's how much we put in before we start the engine okay I've got six liters pumped in here and so I'm just leaving this connected here and I'm going to go start the vehicle and the next step then is to warm up the transmission fluid that's in there uh, until it's at like 45 degrees C and then uh, we'll be checking that with the star system and also I'll probably check on the bottom of the transmission pan too just for comparison. Okay so the engine's running. It sounded a little rattly when I first turned it on and I think that's just a hydraulic pump in there running dry, or not running dry, but running with air in it, and uh, as it runs here, it's quieting down, so uh, still let it run here for a while and warm up the temperature. Okay, so I'm down here reading transmission temperature on the pan, it's a couple hundred degrees, um, and the star system is saying 52 degrees C, so I let it warm up just a little bit too much here, and so we're going to shut it off and add some fluid. Okay, so now since we drained the torque converter, it says we have to add four liters. And so here's my last container. You can see that uh, I've got about four and three quarters liters in there. So I'm going to pump this out until there's about three quarters of a liter left. And that should get me four liters uh, pumped into the transmission. So here we go. You can see it going down. So after the 
first four liters, you do have to run through the gears, so be, you have to be super safe. I've got the vehicle up on a lift here, and so I kind of lowered it so I could use a step stool to get up into the car, and you just have to be super sure your foot's on the brake when you're shifting into park and into, you know, drive and reverse, but you do need to go through the gears to make sure that the transmission gets the fluid pumped into the appropriate places uh, before you take the the uh, fill tube out. But uh, just a safety reminder, just make sure you're in park when you first get in and you've got the brake pedal depressed and uh, probably even good idea to have a block on the wheels, especially if your car's up off the ground. So just be safe. Okay, so we have the temperature at 45 C here. Okay, so down here on the pan, we're at about 130, roughly, uh, with it saying 45 up there. So that's actually a little bit hotter than you might think. I think it's 113 is what it's supposed to be. But this is supposed to be the right temperature to pull this. And I've got a catch container here to catch however much comes out. And uh, I've got the drain plug ready to go back in. So here we go. Just have to get this plastic pipe off of here. And it should start draining out of here. And I'm measuring how much is coming out because I know how much fluid I totally drained out. And I don't want to lose more than uh, what I, I mean, I don't want to end up with less fluid in there than when I started. So it looks like I've got about one liter out so far, and I don't want to go more than about a liter and a half, or otherwise I'll have less fluid than I started with. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on that. And at this point, I can really take this off because there's no reason to have that on there. Okay, now you can see it's just sort of dribbling there. That's where I'm gonna put, go ahead and put this in. You can see how it changed the flow. That means the standpipe is, the level's right about the standpipe. So the job's all done, but there are a couple things I wanted to mention that uh, would have saved me a little bit of time, and hopefully it would help you also. But uh, make sure you have a 27 millimeter socket handy. I didn't have that, I had to go get one uh, to be able to rotate the engine. The other thing was make sure your bolts are right, like mine were not correct and I had to reuse them. Uh, I would recommend getting a new drain plug in the torque converter just because that four millimeter uh, Allen was is just a little loose in there. So I would get a new one of those. Make sure you have new seal uh, rings for the torque converter and the drain plug. So the other, the one last thing I wanted to mention too is I ran the car quite a bit. It was pretty warm. So all the metal kept that heat and it was hot day. So I had to wait kind of a long time for the transmission fluid to cool back down to the 45 degrees. So next time, I think I'm not gonna warm it up quite so much. So just wanna pass those things on to you. Uh, and so hopefully this was a helpful video and thank you for watching.